as well as have this great job, I was limited by the fact that I didn't have, you know, any type of real support to help me with that, both at work, with my family, um, and, you know, just literally how many hours are in a day. And I think that's something that a lot of people are struggling with, where they are ambitious, they want to do as much as they can possibly do, but there's limitations to our time, to our material resources, to our ability, to our flexibility in the workplace, um, our ability to do any of the things that we really want to do. And that is where the reflection in this book really started, where I realized that I'd internalized this idea that if I worked hard enough, I would make it. And I did, in a lot of ways, right? I made it. And But I also was not happy in doing that, and I did not see the kind of success that I thought I would. And for me, there was two pieces to that that I realized. The first was redefining how we see success and redefining what it actually means to make it. But the second was recognizing that I alone was not going to be able to overcome every hurdle and every experience or discrimination that I experienced in the workplace, that it was going to take me reaching out, building community, you know, whether that be some type of worker organizing or whatever that may be, to actually change material conditions for, for employees. And you're also still a boss. I'm wondering if this whole kind of uh, emotional, mental, spiritual journey that you've been on has changed the way you boss. Absolutely, it has. Uh, one of the things that I've really learned through management is the different ways that you can be a manager that is mindful of this moment and all of the different ways that people are interacting with work and how to actually have them feel included and feel okay about whatever they're grappling with in their life, that they don't have to sacrifice everything for the job. And I do that through a series of ways. I mean, I'm really hands-on in terms of feedback. I am really structured in terms of you know what I have around expectations, what are people are expected to do on the job, and also to create an environment where people feel comfortable giving me feedback as much as I'm comfortable giving them feedback. And so it's a it's a you know it's a relationship, not a one-sided you know dictatorship. <laughs> and you know and, and so that is one of the ways that I've tried to account for this moment. But I've also accepted that I alone can't fix this moment. I can't fix that how many people are miserable at work right now. I can't fix the kind of money I have access to, the types of raises that I can give. And so those are the places that I do step back. And I'm, I'm quite transparent about it. I'd say, here's what's possible. Here's what I can do. If you want to do this job, here's what's the reality of the job. Here's how I can make it better for you. But these are the decisions you need to make. And the more frank I am and the more honest I am, I notice the more engaged and, frankly, um, committed many of my employees tend to be because they also see themselves, they see that I'm being honest about my experience and so they feel comfortable being honest about their experience. Before that you go, think back to that young woman who you thought was kind of sold a bill of goods and kind of needed to get knocked around a bit before you realized that it was a bill of goods. You had to kind of figure it out. Can you kind of think back to that person and think what would you tell her if you could talk to that person? What would you, to that Samita, what would you say? At the time, I told myself to fake it till I made it. And what I would say now is don't feel that you're lucky to be there. They're lucky to have you as much as you're lucky to be there. And that there is always an opportunity to make an impact and be invested in your work, but be honest with yourself about what your limitations are and what you're able to actually do with the resources that you have. And don't be so hard on yourself when you're not meeting what you feel success looks like. To really calibrate what success is possible in an environment where you don't have a lot of control over many of the things that are happening around you. And I think that's the advice I would probably give. And the advice that I really hope people feel from this book, because as I say, it's not an advice book, but what I do hope people get out of it is that they feel a little less alone. I think one of the things that has really happened with workplace feminism or what academics have called this kind of neoliberal feminism is the belief that you could pull yourself up by your bootstraps and with hard work you can overcome any obstacle you face. And that has left many of us alienated and feeling alone and feeling like failures, both in our families and in our careers. And the reality is we alone can't actually change many of the structures that we're facing. It's gonna require collective, whether that's organizing, talking, conversations, work-wise, whatever that may be, we need collective community to overcome many of the things that we're experiencing in the workplace. So, Mifa Mukhopadak, thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you.